So hurdles in genetic evaluation, most importantly, the complexity of testing. One patient may have many differential diagnoses. A child with neurodevelopmental delay, one will not one diagnosis you cannot entertain. You will have a big list of neuroregression, involvement of metabolism, some brain developmental abnormalities or early infantile epileptic encephalopathies, all these will come into mind when you have a child with simple developmental delay. So many differential diagnoses will be in your mind. One condition can have many genes. So it's just a group of inborn as a metabolism. There are so many genes involved, a group of disorder called osteogen is imperfect. So many types, so many genes are involved. And one condition may have multiple tests, say Russell Silver syndrome, you may need to methylate, do methylation studies, you may need to look for uh, micro deletions in the gene, gene level deletions, or even you, you may need to do sequencing also. So for one condition, you may need multiple tests, but again, the coverage of each test will vary. You have to go one by one. Inherent fallacy of investigation, like the coverage of that particular lab for that particular gene you are looking for may be low. And the competi competence and bioinformatics team also plays a major role in giving you our results because they are the one who is going to filter all the variants and going to give you the results. Most importantly, there comes the reliability of labs. It doesn't mean, uh, matter how good does it, but where you send it. But again, the person who is reporting, the knowledge of the person is very, very important to get a proper result. And doubtful result, always a hurdle now to establish a genetic diagnosis. Next slide. Money matters. We are the patients from our country, they pay from their pocket. Uh, unlike other countries, there are some insurance coverage at least. So cost constraints are always there in doing the genetic evaluation. But Keep in mind, not all tests are costly. Few tests may be very, very cheaper. Even karyotyping can do it at 1,000 rupees also. But again, depends on your clinical diagnosis. We are going to order the test. That test may be costly based on your uh, clinical diagnosis. So most importantly, make the family understand the worth of testing. You are buying so many cell phones. There may be so many applications, so many specifications. You will not be using so all these things. But again, these cell phone uh, companies are able to sell you the cell phone. Only thing is they make you realize the worth of that equipment. Same way, it is not marketing. It is just an awareness you have to create. Make them understand by doing the test, these informations uh, we are going to get. And this is going to help your family in future as well. So zone red is what we always consider as a very, very immediate uh, family whom we need to act immediately. Do the test immediately is in zone red. Most of the time, if a family comes with an ongoing pregnancy with previous baby affected or a father or mother has some issues like vision loss, hearing loss, they are conceived now and they want to know the recurrences. Ongoing pregnancy, the fetus is growing every day. You have very limited time. We have to do all the tests as soon as possible to get proper results and to prevent recurrence by testing the fetus. So do immediately is in the red zone. Orange zone is if the family is planning pregnancy, but again, now they are not pregnant. They have a baby in hand with whom we need to evaluate or an adult who we need to evaluate. Ask them to postpone the pregnancy somehow and then start doing the genetic evaluation. Ask them to save money and do the test one by one. And once they are comfortable, they can go for uh, next pregnancy. So we'll have enough time, but again, save the money, do it later. Green is more of academic interest. All the family members, uh, family is complete. Nobody is planning pregnancy. There is no implications of this testing in the family. Then it is more of academic interest. You can wait or get some concession or academic interest permission from the labs and do the testing. In the red zone, it is very, very difficult. But again, we try to uh, help the families giving letters, uh, I mean, uh, just connecting between the giver and the receiver. So ongoing pregnancy, always red. Next slide. So money matters a lot in ongoing pregnancy. I told it is a red signal. We have to do the testing immediately. The cost burden, burden is huge on these families. First thing is testing the first child. Then getting a result, testing the family members, mother or father, testing the fetus. All these has to be done immediately, immediately within two to three weeks time. And again, it causes huge impact on the economy of the family. So sometimes we may need to test all three of them. Sometimes some doubtful results come. We have to do the testing uh, in the extended family members. All these involves cost and all these uh, should be done in a very short time. So not only the cost, doing it in a very short time put the family into a lot of economic burden. So hence pre-pregnancy evaluation of a family with genetic disorder is always preferred rather than rushing when they have a pregnancy. Next one.
time matters a lot uh, this is the big hurdle when they come with an ongoing pregnancy pregnancy confirmation happens by 6 weeks by urine testing or by dating scan and again you have to test the fetus inside at least by 16 to 18 weeks because all these test results take at least 4 weeks time if you test the fetus at least by 20 weeks only you will get the results by 4 weeks time maybe 24 and according to pcpndt act we cannot take decisions whether to continue the pregnancy or not after 24 weeks of gestation so from 6 weeks onwards we just have 14 weeks to do the prenatal diagnosis, amniocentesis. And meantime, you have to test the index patient. If doubt, you have to test the extended family member. You may need to check the parent and then come to the fetus. If there are some doubtful results, you may need to do functional evaluation in the index patient also. So if everything goes well, you can go one by one, you can uh, achieve that target. But sometimes if there are some equivocal results, you will be stuck and it will be very, very difficult to finish off your genetic diagnosis of the fetus at the speculated time. So uh, uh, ongoing pregnancy, uh, testing the fetus, always be run behind the time. Next slide. So in an ongoing pregnancy, previously everything was fine and uh, we are facing the abnormality in the fetus. That is an fetal anomaly, yeah, abnormality that happens in the fetus. Now the fetus is the index child who has got an abnormality. No other family member have any uh, issues. The issue here is whether the abnormality is significant, whether it is going to affect the life of the patient or the quality of the life of the patient. All these things has to be decided. Most importantly, you cannot uh, decide just based on some subtle findings. You have to be 100% sure this is going to affect the uh, baby's life. And if it is a major anomaly based on the ultrasound findings itself, you can decide. But again, if it is a subtle anomaly or an evolving anomaly, we will not know whether this is going to evolve over a period of time or this is going to stop at that moment itself. A child with echogenic kidneys, the kidney is going to enlarge later or it is going to become a cystic kidneys, we will not know. We will know only echogenic kidneys, whether to evaluate or not, we have to decide now itself. So collect all the evidences possible in a fetus because you will have very little time with the fetus. Once you say the fetus, there is a fetal abnormality, the family will be ready to terminate immediately. The moment they go for termination, you will not get the fetus. You will not get any access to the DNA of the fetus. Collect all the evidences possible so that you can guide the family in the next next pregnancies. Ultrasound findings, if a central nervous system abnormality, brain abnormality, fetal MRI, if the baby is good, uh, grown enough, and fetal carrier typing or single gene exome panels, whatever test you want to do based on the uh, finding, you do it at once. If they are not affordable, at least store DNA in a commercial lab so that you can use that DNA later. The DNA storage, that they charge around 1,000 to 2,000 rupees only for in a lab. It, they may store for two years' time. So me meantime, the family will come back and then you can do the testing. If in case if they are going to terminate, they can terminate, but DNA storing has to be done so that we will have something to evaluate later. If in case if they are terminating, fetal autopsy is strongly recommended but again, so if the family is not willing, at least do clinical photographs or some skeletal displacers, at least do an X-ray so that we will know the bone pathology by the X-rays itself. So based on the autopsy finding, you do the further testing from the stored DNA. So an anomaly, you store, um, family is not willing to continue, they're terminating, store the DNA, uh, give the baby for autopsy after storing DNA, and the baby's autopsy report will come little later. Based on the autopsy finding also, you can make decisions and then do the genetic evaluation in the stored DNA. Next slide. Anomaly counseling a fetus with an abnormality is not like red, uh, red sign or green sign. Just go ahead or stop the pregnancy. It is not uh, enough to give this information. How to manage the remaining weeks? Is it worth to continue the pregnancy? Determining the outcome, is it really worth to terminate the pregnancy? Planning for the birth process, whether the baby has to be delivered in a tertiary care unit, if it is a cardiac anomaly, you need a cardiologist immediately. You have to plan all these. Planning for the newborn infant, you form a team based on the anomaly. You are, say, uh, cardiac anomaly, cardiologist will be ready. He will, he will know this baby is going to get delivered today and he'll be ready to receive the baby. All of a sudden, at night, 2 o'clock, it will be 
very surprising for him to receive a baby like that so deciding whether the continue whether to continue pr the pregnancy or not is not the question what to, what will happen in the future pregnancies whether this will recur i will will the family or we will be uh, able to detect this early in next pregnancy or we can avoid the abnormalities in the next pregnancy all these questions has to be answered prior before doing that termination process next slide So law matters, PCP and it is very, very strict. No termination beyond 24 weeks. If in case uh, you want to test the fetus directly, a baby with an abnormality and a mother is pregnant for the second time, why can't I go test the fetus directly? Why should I test the first child and then come to the fetus? So most of many times, many a times we face this question. If we are, if you are testing the fetus, there is a risk of 0.5 to 1% abortion because of the invasive testing. If you are taking that risk, you should have the justification. The justification should be a genetic diagnosis made in the previous baby or in the family, which shows there is a recurrence risk for this fetus. The recurrence can be 25% or 50%. Because of this percentage, I am doing genetic testing in this fetus, taking that 0.15% risk. So this is the justification we should have. If in case, we, and most importantly, we are getting so many variants of unknown significance in children or adults with so many clinical features. The fetus is lying silently inside. We don't know whether the fetus is affected by the familial genetic disorder or not. If you go test the fetus, you get some variant of unknown significance. What we will do with the result is a big, big confusion there. If in case if we test the fetus directly, we get a VUS or unapproved result and patient miscarries, post-procedure, how to defend ourselves without any report being done previously. Never attempt direct genetic evaluation on a fetus for familial disorders. You can attempt direct genetic evaluation on a fetus if the fetus has an anomaly. There is a finding in the fetus, you are justified in doing. But somebody else in the family has an abnormality, you don't know the diagnosis, then you cannot do genetic testing in the fetus directly. <laughs>